Okay, so welcome and today we will speak about Poland. Uh, who wants to start? Bruno, Mateusz? Maybe Mateusz, because he's from Poland, now he's in Poland. So he yes, has... I am in Poland, yes. So <laughs> uh, I think uh, that uh, the main topic for us to discuss today uh, was uh, the situation uh, <clears throat> somehow connected to the events on the Polish-Belarusian border, yes? Uh, so uh, let's start uh, trying to explain what's uh, what's what's happening and what's going on uh, on the eastern Polish border. And uh, I will also go a little further uh, eastwards uh, and uh, speak about Ukraine as well, because uh, we have to place all the events in a kind of geopolitical context, uh, which is uh, actually the most important now. And we are speaking uh, after um, the talks, the video talks of uh, Vladimir Putin and uh, Joe Biden. So we can already comment uh, from the geopolitical point of view what's, uh, what's going on, what's happening there. And uh, we are speaking also um, after the tour of uh, Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki and uh, Polish President as well. Uh, to several European countries where those Polish politicians were trying to convince their European counterparts that uh, we are we are having a pre-war situation actually in the uh, eastern part of Europe. Of course, that the main threat for the European security is uh, Russian Federation actually. No one speaks uh, anymore about uh, Lukashenko, about Belarus, because... Uh, Belarus is pre presented by the Polish authorities as an instrument of uh, geopolitical plans and concepts of uh, Russian Federation. So, uh, what's going on now? Uh, I think that uh, Poland is uh, uh, being, a, first and foremost, uh, being a part of uh, US, or to be more precise, it's not the US, it's even a kind of Anglo-Saxon plan a geopolitical plan to uh, destabilize Eurasia as such and to prevent uh, all kinds of possible cooperation between uh, Europe as such, between European Union at the moment being, and uh, the uh, Eurasian bloc. It's trying to uh, again, uh, let's say, ignite some conflicts and convince the Europeans, uh, mostly the Western Europeans, that uh, they have to forget about uh, all kinds of economic, political, geopolitical cooperation with the Russian Federation, which is the leading force, of course, of the Eurasian uh, integration process. Uh, and uh, to do that, of course, <clears throat> they have to uh, show that, uh, first and foremost, there was a huge wave of uh, immigrants which uh, were posing a threat for the whole Europe. So, uh, again, there is a, an old concept of uh, uh, the so-called ante murale, which means uh, the, the, that Poland uh, is presented as a kind of defender of European interests, of the Western civilization, so-called Western civilization, and so on. So they needed those immigrants. I, I think that was a kind of information operation because uh, looking at the numbers of the immigrants, uh, I mean, the, the threat was not so big. Everything was so exaggerated by the Polish politicians and Polish media just to prove that Poland is still here. Poland is guarding the uh, eastern frontiers of uh, Western civilization. And uh, uh, first and foremost, that the guys from Moscow are planning everything and using uh, Belarus and Lukashenko and those poor immigrants uh, to uh, destabilize Europe. Uh, so we again had those notion abused notion of uh, the so-called hybrid war. Uh, if you if you notice that, I, I think that uh, this is the most popular word uh, in uh, 2021 when it comes to the um, uh, political uh, communication coming out from Poland. Hybrid war, which is actually, which, which actually means nothing, yes? Because if the guys are telling us, trying to convince us that uh, hybrid war is waged by Belarus and by Kremlin, of course, against uh, Europe and against the West, they should first try to explain the public opinion what hybrid war is. And ac according to all dictionaries, according to all uh, scholar uh, scientific works, uh, the word hybrid or hybridity uh, is a word which uh, indicates that there are two kinds of different, in this particular case, aggression against a given country. Even in the American 
handbooks of geostrategy and uh, geopolitics, uh, the hybrid war is described as a war which is waged conventionally. So we, on the one hand, you have a conventional um, attack of armed forces on on the territory of of the of the um, uh, opponent. On the other hand, you have other means like uh, economic, like uh, information, like uh, uh, let's say cyber and so on. Yes, but to speak about the hybrid war about which the Polish politicians are speaking all around in Europe, you have to uh, give any kind of evidence that the country. Uh, the neighboring country, the aggressive country, is uh, attacking you milit in military way, in a military way. So, uh, mm, as we all perfectly know, no one has announced a conventional war from Minsk uh, against Poland or against the West or against the European Union. There is no single Belarusian soldier on the territory of Poland um, preparing any kind of military aggression. So there is no hybrid war as well. Yes. They are just uh, abusing the words, which they part of them, I mean, part of the Polish lights, which are visiting uh, now several Western European countries, uh, they simply do not understand the meaning of uh, the simplest notions, like hybrid war, for instance. Uh, part of them are perfectly understanding the notion, but they are abusing uh, those notions uh, just to uh, threaten uh, the um, people and the uh, let's say, the public opinion of uh, of the West, just to convince them that uh, still in Kremlin, Vladimir Putin is planning a full-scale war uh, in the eastern part of Europe. And, of course, in the same time, you have the um, information war operation uh, waged by the West, uh, particularly uh, with the help of the Ukrainians, as we see uh, all those information coming about the concentration of uh, Russian military troops on the border of Ukraine, yes? And no one gives any mm, attention to the fact that uh, uh, the mm, uh, troops, the Russian troops, the Russian army units are operating on the territory of Russian Federation, which, uh, I, I, I mean, it's, it's their right to do that. They are entitled to do that. Any country can move its uh, military troops and units as, as it wants and, and, and uh, wherever it wants within the borders of a given country, within its own territory. Yes, this is the first fact. The second fact uh, is that uh, uh, Russia uh, doesn't have any uh, even smallest, slightest interest in, um, in a military operation against Ukraine at the moment being. And uh, it's very obvious when you he uh, hear what is uh, mm, what, what are the statements of uh, President Vladimir Putin of uh, Foreign Affairs Minister Lavrov and so on, uh, their uh, goal, geopolitical goal, is completely different. They just want to prevent and to guarantee that aggressive military NATO bloc, political military bloc of NATO, will not move eastwards. Yes, and that's very simple. I mean, they have voiced their concerns and uh, uh, their concerns are nothing new because actually if you look even in the times of the Soviet Union, I mean, uh, just before the fall of the Soviet Union, uh, the West, uh, particularly the United States, but not only, uh, have give, has given several promises, several guarantees uh, to uh, Mikhail Gorbachev at that time, then to Boris Yeltsin, then to uh, Vladimir Putin as well, that they will not move eastwards. They have broken all the promises, uh, uh, and uh, that's why now Putin and uh, uh, Kremlin just want to have it... Uh, um, written, just want to have it uh, like a guarantee written, uh, prescribed in a kind of a treaty. So that's the only problem now in the East. Poland um, is used and uh, abused uh, with the, this Belarusian crisis and with uh, all that is going on uh, around Ukraine as well as a kind of a hoax of a kind of a hawkish state uh, here uh, in uh, Central Europe and the Polish politicians well. To say it uh, in the most simple uh, words uh, which come to my mind, uh, Polish politicians are just uh, traveling across Europe and uh, playing a role of uh, warmongers, uh, which is uh, prescribed for them by uh, the hoax, uh, by the Atlantinists uh, from the United States and United Kingdom as well. This time United Kingdom is quite quite active, I think. I don't know what, uh, what your colleagues think about it, but uh, that's my general opinion. Yeah. You want to say something, Bruno? 
Yes, so I, I, yeah, I entirely agree with that fact, and I even, um, I, of course, I'm not sure, but I would like to um, to uh, um, make an hypothesis because all this crisis at the Polish-Belarusian border uh, is always um, um, shown as if um, the Belarusians uh, 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 wanted to take people from Middle East and push them in, 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 into European Union, into Poland, because of uh, a tense relation between Minsk and Brussels. Of course, we can take that into account, but we have also to take into account two other facts. I mean, most of people coming to Belarus and going to Poland, Lithuania and uh, Latvia are coming from two countries. They are coming from uh, Kurd uh, Iraqi Kurdistan and uh, Syrian um, 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 refugees in Lebanon. And uh, we know that these two countries, the airport of Iraq and the airport of Lebanon, are under American uh, um, under American um, uh, uh, supervision, uh, and um, uh, those people wouldn't leave these countries uh, if the American wouldn't know about that. Um, and that, that's one thing, uh, especially if we take into account Lebanon, uh, the Syrian refugees in Lebanon, we have about one million Syrian refugees in Lebanon, are forbidden to go back to Syria by the Lebanese government, which is under American pressure. Uh, they would like to go to Syria, back to Syria, since Syria now is peaceful, most of the territory of Syria, but they can't. So they are in a very bad situation since the Lebanese situation is catastrophical. Uh, so they are pushed uh, to go everywhere they can. Um, so they leave the Beirut airport for Minsk uh, and then trying to go to Western Europe. Um, and the same thing, uh, 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 Iraqi Kurdistan is a puppet uh, entity which was created by the Americans and even the Israelis and is under the, their direct, uh, direct uh, uh, supervision. Uh, and of course, we know that the economical situation in the Iraqi um, uh, 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 um, Iraqi Kurdistan, uh, which was um, shown by the pro Western propaganda as a, a modern, uh, democratic, uh, free enterprise state, is now uh, a complete burden, and people leave that uh, liberated area as, as soon as they can. Um, so I would like, I think that uh, the situation at the Belarusian Polish border is not. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, exactly uh, the, the situation we, we, we see in the media. Uh, there is a, a, a provocation, uh, there, there could be at least a provocation coming from the, the American to make the situation tense at the Polish-Belarusian border. And so Poland, uh, Polish politicians can play their role inside Western Europe to push all Western European countries uh, more and more, I, I would say, um, uh, in the hand of uh, of the warmonger um, Mateusz told about, and I think that is, uh, that's a point we have to to take into account, and that's in hypothesis uh, we have to to examine because um, we have to look how functions the the airport of Beirut and the airport of Erbil um, and the airport of Dubai because people coming from Iraq are going sometimes to Dubai and from Dubai. Dubai to, 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 to Belarus and Dubai also we know uh, that, uh, that the, of course the Arab Emirates are very linked with American imperialism um, and all these airports couldn't function without the agreement of the US uh, and this, this element has to also to be taken into account I think um, and I don't know what you think about that but I think that we have also to examine that, uh, that uh, possibility. I would like to ask a question to both of you. The question is, do you think that... Uh, I, I, I think that all the situation with Polish-Belarusian border, the, the, the biggest uh, winner of the situation is the Polish ruling party. That yeah, uh, we right. have to remember that a <clears throat> few months ago, uh, the diplomatic situation of Poland was very, very 
-hmm. not good that uh, that Poland have a, a big conflict with the European Union. Uh, also, the the problems with the United States, the pr President Biden uh, three, uh, said that uh, the Polish politicians will not come to to to, Pol uh, to to America. That uh, Poland will be not invited to this uh, summit of the for the for the democracy, uh, and. It, it was a moment, I think, in August when there was this uh, this uh, attempt to delegalize the TVN television, th when the government of Poland was the, the US uh, TVN television because yes, it's American the television. TVN television is a US uh, yes, uh, Polish yes. television. So, so it was a moment when first time I think after the. After the new capitalist Poland in the first uh, 30 years, the uh, Poland was totally isolated in the Western countries. Nobody wanted to have a contact with the Polish government. And the European Union, very serious, started to speak about uh, to make a re regime change in Poland. All this operation to promote Donald Tusk and, and his movement was uh, for this, to, to how to how to change the the uh, the government in Poland. And uh, when this crisis was started. Uh, the situation situation is changed. Now we have the solidarity from the European U Union countries, from the from the government of the Germany, but all the Commission Europea uh, stopped to criticize Poland. Now they uh, they forget it about the human rights in Poland. They forget it about other other questions. Uh, Poland was invited to the summit of the democracy, and Biden, when he speak with with Putin, uh, he defend Poland. So uh, now is the question: Why this uh, this uh, crisis in the Polish Belarusian border uh, are so so long? And there was a leak from the from the uh, Polish politician Dworczyk. He is the I don't know the porte parole uh, uh, of the government. And he said that it is very good. It is very good. We have to all the time speak about this because it it will make uh, the, the popularity of, of, of our government. And it's right. So 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 now we 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 and if it is right, it it will show that the one more time the Jaroslav Kaczynski shown that he is somebody who who is a very good chess player in the politician uh, politician things. What do you think about this? Mm. Uh, well, uh, who is starting first? Uh, oh, okay, we'll go on, my Matus, and I will yes. talk about uh, uh, later. Uh, of course, it has uh, internal uh, goals, internal political goals. I mean, the whole situation, uh, without any doubt. I would just like to remind you that uh, Law and Justice Party, the ruling party, made uh, immigration and the issues of immigration as one of the main points, points of their political agenda uh, already in 2015. So this is one of the of those, uh, let's say, anti-immigrant movements, which are very well known in Western Europe, but uh, which are quite a new phenomena in uh, Central European countries. Why? because there's a certain paradox in it. Uh, if you would ask uh, uh, anyone of those uh, immigrants on the Belarusian Polish border, where are they going to, uh, to stay as uh, immigrants and ask for refugee sta status, no one of them would name Poland, of course, yes, because uh, they are totally uninterested in staying in Poland, as uh, at first the Polish system is not very friendly towards any uh, not only immigrants, but even its own people when it can, comes to, uh, let's say, welfare issues, social issues, and so on. Uh, second, uh, there's another thing that, uh, unfortunately, in Poland, we have a, a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, 
to say to say the least uh, xenophobic reactions of uh, local population towards uh, non-european people yes so this is a problem in poland and uh, uh, for at least those two reasons one uh, social economical and the uh, second uh, let's say the the, the the cultural political and the immigrants from the middle east would not feel very comfortable in poland so we perfectly know that uh, all those people are heading to germany first and foremost and the germans know it perfectly and uh, that's why of course i agree that uh, the germans uh, who uh after their elections, uh, but still before their elections to several land tax, particularly in eastern uh, parts of Germany, will have the elections to, to the land tax in uh, Sachsen, uh, in uh, Turingen, if if I'm not wrong, in uh, next year. Uh, so uh, the Germans try to avoid the um, rising wave of their own national populism, which is uh, alternative for uh, Germany party, which is gaining more and more support, particularly in Eastern German lands. And uh, of course, which is using uh, the immigration issue as a fuel for, it, for its political campaigns. So I understand the interests of German government now. Uh, the new government of Scholz, but also the former government of Angela Merkel, uh, are uh, based on the idea not to let any more uh, immigrants, non-European any immigrants uh, from anywhere uh, to Germany, at least before the elections to the land tax uh, in the eastern part of Germany. Uh, that's quite obvious. And that's why, of course, they have to close their eyes. Michal, you are right. Uh, for the um, uh, rule of law violations and uh, all the other issues which are happening in Poland, uh, because now they are uh, more focused on their own political situation and po on, own political uh, problems raising from the immigration uh, than uh, on the rule of law or, or and the all other issues like human rights and so on in uh, in Poland. So they um, don't particularly care about that. And, uh, and the second, uh, the second thing I would like to just uh, add, uh, I would like to go back to to what Bruno said about uh, the courts, the courts which are um, uh, comprising the biggest part of the immigration of, of this wave of immigration. Uh, first and foremost, uh, according to some Belarusian sources, some of those courts. Uh, our former fighters of uh, the Peshmerga, mm -hmm. uh, which means that, uh, uh, well, at least uh, mm, at least uh, some part of this uh, immigration wave uh, is an immigration wave comprised of the Kurds, which were pro-US and pro-Israel on, on the territories of Iraq. And now you have to take into account, uh, uh, additionally to what Bruno said, that uh, the United States and the Biden administration are still uh, announcing and planning and confirming that they will soon withdraw from Iraq. Yeah. So uh, the, after, after those Kurds in, a, in a, let's say, Peshmerga movement in the pro-US, uh, pro-occupation Peshmerga movement, uh, so the pictures from the Kabul airport, Mm -hmm. the so evacuation yes i think that uh, they they are going to and they are very determined to leave iraq uh, not later but sooner and to be in time before the americans leave uh, before the american occupational forces leave the country yes that's one of the reasons yes because uh, of course <laughs> i don't think that iraq if that if iraq would be a sovereign independent country uh, um, they would they could feel safe as as, as former collaborators of, of the us there yes so uh, we have to take take that into account that uh, these are mainly the Kurds. We have also taken into account that uh, if those people, I mean, if if uh, if that's true, what the Belarusians are, are telling us, uh, and if those people are connected to Peshmerga movement, then probably uh, they are somehow still coordinated by the US. Mm. So uh, uh, another issue is that the US uh, might have coordinated. Uh, all this uh, wave and, and and stream of immigration from there, even if you look at their passports uh, and uh, places of origin, uh, there are huge groups of uh, several hundreds or 
uh, even two three thousands of people coming from one medium city uh, in, uh, in, uh, in in Kurdistan which is very strange we agree. Yeah. Okay. So, so it can be somehow coordinated it uh, we, 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 we cannot exclude the fact that it is coordinated of course uh, we are paying attention only to the uh, Polish uh, mm, uh, Polish Belarusian border but in the same time in the same time if you look at the news even the official news and announcements uh, there are several thousands of those Kurds passing the Turkish Bulgarian border on the mm -hmm. one hand and on the other hand there are several mm, hundreds maybe thousands of Kurds passing the the Ukrainian Polish border yes mm -hmm. so I think just to turn our attention on Belarus and to use this against uh, uh, Lukashenko Putin and so on in this geo geopolitical context they are mm, uh, let's say uh, pretending that they are defending the the border against the immigrants and so on but they are doing nothing there in Bulgaria of course and they are doing nothing there in uh, in the Polish Ukrainian border because they are focusing on Belarus that's very interesting uh, as well so uh, I think it's just a political instrument a kind of political uh, operation uh, and of course also um, uh, it comes out of a threat of a horror which is uh, um, uh, which is felt by by by, by the Kurds uh, after they they saw the fate of of the Afghan collaborators of the United States in the context that the US is is going to withdraw from Iraq. I think. So. Yes. Yes, I think it's very important what Mateusz just say because uh, it's very important uh, information uh, we have to to take into account and uh, and this has to be uh, also taken into account uh, in the context that uh, Turkey uh, um, is uh, is then using its territory. I mean, uh, yeah, the territory of Turkey is also used as it was used earlier for uh, migrant. Uh, 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 moves, uh, but formerly uh, Turkey was accused. Now Turkey uh, is not accused, and we have to take into account that the the new line of Erdogan is rather back pro-Western, uh, pro-Ukrainian, anti-Russian, and so on. Uh, so uh, that's also very important to take into account that the um, the West, uh, Western power uh, do not criticize anymore Erdogan. Uh, as they did uh, a couple of years ago. So so we have a, a, a Turkey which is back into the courtyard, I would say, of NATO. And uh, and that's that's a point we have to take uh, also into account. Uh, another point I would like to, uh, to focus on is the fact that um, uh, I think that, the, um, of course, the, the so-called nationalism of the Polish government was uh, 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 criticized in the West, maybe because uh, Poland looked like a country which is going too far in the direction of nationalism. But basically, uh, 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 it's a fake nationalism, and all the strategy uh, uh, of the West is to, um, to rehabilitate the, the Polish government uh, as soon as uh, it's uh, it's only fake nationalism, and I would like to to, to focus on the fact that, uh, as you say, Mateusz, the, the migrants are not going to Poland or to Lithuania. They are, they want to go to Germany or Scandinavia, but they don't want to go to Poland. So if Poland was a real nationalist country with a real nationalist government, what would do Poland? Poland would uh, Polish government would take this migrants in uh, at the bo Belarusian border and let them go by train or by bus to the German border and the problem will be solved. Then there would be no problem for Poland. Um, and for a, a, a pure nationalistic, uh, let's say, ethnocentric, racist, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, anyway they, there will be no problem for the Warsaw government. So uh, the, the, the actual situation, the current situation at the Polish-Belarusian border shows that in fact, in spite of all the discourses, the Warsaw government is not at all nationalist, is purely pro-Western, pro-American, uh, pro-EU, uh, 
um, even if it, it, uh, its discourse uh, can look uh, nationalistic or even sometimes xenophobic, but anyway, it's pure fake. In fact, they are um, uh, good people, let's say, of the Western, uh, uh, Western, like you say, uh, quote, civilization. And we have to take also into account a second element, I think it's very important, is the fact that um, during the Trump administration, the Polish government was, uh, um, was um, uh, supported by American, by Trump, uh, and, but especially by the United States. And I would say not only, only by Trump, but by all the, the American deep states, because at that time, whatever we think about uh, Merkel and her government, Germany tended to have a more um, independent course uh, and we saw it with the so-called the Nord Stream uh, gas pipeline, for example. Uh, pipeline, for example, um, because if we look at the German situation, we can observe that for a couple of years we have a strong fight inside the German establishment, which let's say the uh, big German uh, capitalist companies. Which are interested to some to some form of cooperation with Eurasian countries for economical reason, uh, Eurasian countries and eventually also China, uh, but especially with Eurasian countries. And we have also the former, uh, let's say, leading class of Germany, which was formed by the American after the Second World War, which are completely linked with uh, the interest of the American. Uh, let's say empire, and I would say that during the Merkel government, the the um, the uh, Germany was tending to have a little bit more independent policy toward Washington, and for this purpose, Poland, Romania, Baltic states were very important as a wall between Russia and Germany. But now the situation has changed. Because we have a new government in, in Germany, and if you look at the uh, program of this new government, the written program of this new government, and especially if you look at the new uh, foreign minister of, of Germany, the, the, we, we, we must assume something which can be strange for a lot of superficial obser observer. But in fact, the SPD Green government in Germany now is much more right wing than the CDU Merkel government, much more pro NATO, much more pro US. Um, and then Germany is, let's say, back home for the United States. And the Poland is not so useful uh, as a, a tool uh, between Germany and uh, Eurasia, because um, the American uh, can, in the situation when Germany is cooperating with them, the American they have nothing to 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 uh, against the fact that Germany would lead, let's say, uh, European Union for the American interest, uh, because the United States have not the, the strengths they had earlier. And now the United States, their strengths can, must be concentrated in some part of the world. And we know they concentrate their, their, their force in Asia. Um, for them, Middle East, as you said, and Europe, uh, is secondary, uh, and as soon as Germany is is on their side, they can uh, delegate uh, uh, their uh, imperial power to Germany and, and to the uh, to a, a German controlled European Union, which will be linked with the United States, and in the same time with a Germany which will be part of the uh, American world strategy, and we see it very clearly because. Uh, the Kriegsmarine, the, 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 the German war, uh, war uh, vessels are now in Asia. I mean, the Bayern uh, destroyer uh, visited all Asian countries, and now we have uh, Germany and France uh, uh, taking part in the American aggressive provocations in Asia. So um, we have a new situation, uh, and in this new situation, I think that Polish government um, uh, is used as the uh, the forefront, uh, uh, the wall of the new imperialism in Europe. I mean, so the new the the the, the former uh, the, the Polish government that was uh, quarrelling 
uh, with Brussels is not any more useful. So we have, I mean, Americans have to rehabilitate it. Uh, and they do. They do because now the, the Polish government is showing that uh, he's defending so-called democracy uh, at the Polish-Belarusian border. We forgot about all the former uh, 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 critics against that government. And we have back a Polish government which is invited at the Democracy Forum uh, one year after uh, Biden told that he will never uh, meet with Duda or, 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 or other Polish uh, politicians. Now uh, everything is forgotten. I mean, uh, Polish peace government is back home, I would say. Uh, and he's, uh, um, he's back a democratic government quote, of course. Um, and that's, that's very important, I think, because uh, things are changing and uh, the new Germany is much more pro-NATO. Uh, the Polish government is pro-NATO, but uh, of course, the, 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 the Germany um, uh, has, uh, can, can, can supervise uh, this Polish government. I would like also to, to take into account the fact that Germany didn't criticize too much the, the, uh, the um, uh, Polish government, because, for example, uh, when the Turów mining uh, uh, had to be cut because of, of, of uh, uh, European Union pressure. It was done under Czech pressure, but the German government didn't take part in that, which is very important because if it was a, a pollution question, uh, it would have been very important not only for Czechs, but also for Germans. So the Germans didn't, uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, react. And I would say that it shows that, in fact, uh, the Kaczynski regime in Warsaw uh, do not really uh, uh, bother them as soon as it is a puppet regime uh, which can use nationalistic discourse for the internal uh, public of Polish opinion. But in fact, uh, it's not at all a nationalist government. It's a purely puppet government, which which, you, which is using xenophobic accent here and there. Um, as it is accepted in a lot of countries uh, which are allied of the United States. I mean, not to talk about India, uh, Modi's India, which is uh, purely racist, and the Americans have nothing to do to, to criticize about that, uh, and not talking uh, about Ukraine's fascists, not talking about uh, racist uh, uh, laws in L Latvia, and so on and so on. So, um, so that's the reason why I think, basically, uh, 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 the, the, the situation at the Polish-Belarusian border was very important for a propaganda reason uh, to rehabilitate the Kaczynski-Duda uh, uh, government, um, waiting for a new government in Poland in the future. But for the moment, this government is pleasing their masters. So it so is it very, is very tragic, tragic and tragic, tragic situation. situation. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> normally, normally, the the diplomatic uh, from from country wants to if they have the conflict with somebody, it's the conflict in the other continent or with the somebody who is very very far. For Polish government, the most important is uh, have the conflict with our neighbors. Yeah. Uh, because uh, and it is very dangerous situation because uh, already in the 20th century in in the land in the Polish land we have two times the 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 the, the world wars uh, yeah. and uh, especially second world war uh, I totally destroyed our country I, I don't want to think how will, will we finish it will be if will be war with Russia with all this nuclear potential of, of Russia but the PIS want to have conflict with our neighbors because 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 of this conflict they have good relations with with the western countries yeah. I will read one uh, the very long uh, question from the chat for both of you. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you know that there is a French route to uh, of Middle East refugees via South 
America. They fly to Brazil, illegally cross the border to French Guiana in St. George, where they claim asylum. When they wait for a de decision, France pays uh, 250 euros per month per person. See the difference, improved general government, organized pogroms in the forest on the Belarus border, whereas France gives uh, 2,050 euros per refugee to cover the cost of staying in Cayenne. Uh, yes, I, I mean, I, I, we know about that, uh, but it's not very... Uh, Uh, known, let's say, on, on mass media, but of course that's right, that, you know, French, uh, France has uh, what they called, uh, uh, on the other side of the sea, territories, in fact, are colonies, and French Guiana uh, on the Brazilian border is one of these French territories, which are supposed to be uh, equal uh, member of the, of the French Republic and of the European Union. So if you am French Guiana, it's exactly, legally speaking, it's egal, exactly the same uh, that if you are entering France by Strasbourg or Marseille or Paris Airport. It, it, legally, it's exactly the same. And of course, we know that the French Guiana border cannot be controlled because it's Amazonia, it's pure forest and so on and so on. But uh, 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 in fact, um, that's, that's a, a real situation. We know about that, but we have to take into account, you know, all this question of migrants is pure hypocrisy because uh, uh, we know that the um, uh, uh, big capitalists want to have illegal uh, migrants because illegal migrants work for low paid salary and they are competing with people um, uh, asking for better salary because they have pa paper and they have their law in, on their side. I mean, from, you know, I work as worker in the, for, for different reasons. I had to, to, to work like uh, as worker at the beginning of the tw uh, 2000 year. Uh, and I was an illegal worker. Uh, and I was the only worker on my uh, um, building because where I was working on, 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 uh, on um, outside, you know, um, building new houses, uh, new buildings. And uh, uh, I was the only one having paper. But the best was that at a certain moment we were uh, uh, we were repairing the uh, Palais Chaillot Museum, which is a state-owned museum. And in this state-owned museum, I, I was the only one with paper in this state-owned museum. So it means that the French state um, accept um, illegal workers even better. These illegal workers, illegal showed me their tax paying because they are paying legally tax in spite of the facts that they are illegal so in fact we have a pure hypocrisy when we when we think that uh, uh, western uh, 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 countries are fighting against illegal mig migration they want that this uh, illegal uh, illegal migration i mean because the, the big capitalist needs to have people without paper working for they, them with low salary because of course when they have the the competition between a a, 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 a legal worker, whatever he is French or immigrant, but with paper, he will ask for a better salary than an illegal worker. So uh, 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 all this 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 uh, hypocrisy about the fact that uh, uh, Western world doesn't want migrants uh, and that uh, uh, it's it's pure hypocrisy. In fact, they want to have this this illegal worker. Um, but they want them to be illegal because as soon as they would be legal, they would ask for better salary. Um, so uh, 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 they need this, uh, this, this. And of course, French Guiana. We know about. Yeah, you're right. We know that it's one of the of the of the uh, of the way people are going in France. We have that uh, um, in in different. Um, uh, 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 border of, of of European Union. There are places where people do 
cross the border, uh, which is not shown at the, um, in the media. When Turkey was, uh, was in tension with the Western world, uh, we knew about the fact that uh, migrants are coming from Turkey to Greece and so on and so on, and there were big scandal about that. But as Mateusz said, now we have the same situation, but nobody writes about that. Why? Because now Erdogan is a good guy. He was a bad guy two years ago. Now he's a good guy because he's pro-NATO and, he, uh, and he's uh, helping Ukraine to make its provocation against Russia. So, so now he's a good guy. Since he's, he's a good guy, they, he will not be criticized. Uh, and the, 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 the illegal workers they need in Western Europe are coming through Turkey via Bulgaria without problem. We focus on the Polish-Belarusian border for political reason, not for uh, human rights reason. That's... <laughs> Yes, I, I would like that uh, you, you may comment, you or Mateusz, um, could you compare the situation in the polish belarusian border with the uh, border of France and England? Because uh, ah, few, that's uh, another two, point. Yeah. Two, two weeks ago, there was a very big catastrophe. I think that more than 20 migrants died uh, in this uh, La Manche channel. But uh, this situation that uh, all the time the, the French... Uh, Uh, authorities use these migrants to push them to the to the coat uh, and uh, i i have no idea why all the time the the media talks about this question of poland and Belarus, and nobody speak about this conflict uh, france uh, french uh, and england and they don't don't say that i don't know macron he is like lukashenko Because, as I told you, it's pure hypocrisy. They focus on one situation uh, on the border they want to show. Uh, but, uh, of course, it's a screen. And behind, uh, be, be, behind the screen, we have a situation like the one you are talking about uh, or the one we have between uh, uh, Morocco and Spain, where also there are a lot of, of people uh, uh, dying every time. We have also a new situation you have to, 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 to know because uh, the Frontex, Uh, navy in the Mediterranean Sea now, they um, uh, uh, when they catch a uh, 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 little, uh, little boat with refugees, they are not taking them to Italy, they are taking them to Libya. So even if the, those people are uh, uh, coming from Tunisia uh, 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 very near to Italy, they are sent back very far from that to Libya, which is, of course, a fake state, and uh, they are pushed there. So uh, we have different situations depending on different countries because, uh, of course, Italy uh, 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 has too, spent too, many, too much money To, for migrants, so Italy has asked the Frontex to work against uh, migration on the Mediterranean Sea, but on the same time we focus, as you say, um, at the Belarusian-Polish border, and we don't focus also at the La Manche Canal, uh, Channel uh, 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 migrant uh, tragedies, and all that is showing two things. It's showing the hypocrisy of Western, um, Western um, uh, elite, Uh, and the EU uh, country elite, that's one thing, but it also shows how medias are completely uh, controlled uh, and I would say censored by the elite uh, because they cannot uh, uh, talk about things that shouldn't be quite, uh, shouldn't be kept um, uh, 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 unknown. Uh, so uh, we have here also the, the proof that there is no media pluralism, there is a complete monolithism uh, of media, public and private, and uh, 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 very few media have the possibility uh, to um, defend their own uh, independence. We, we we are just living in a, I would say, in a soft dictatorship 
with strong censorship, even if this censorship is not the censorship we, we knew uh, from all the um, uh, fascist uh, dictatorship. And that's also an, a thing we have to, to, to take into account. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want, Mateusz, add something? <clears throat> well, I would just add that, uh, of course, the situation will be used, and uh, that's my prognosis. Uh, the situation on the Polish Belarusian border will be used and abused uh, for yeah. uh, several months, if not years. Uh, we have one example, actually, very, very similar with uh, the situation on the Turkish Greek border. Oh, yeah. Was, uh, yeah, like a, which was like a continuing crisis for about uh, three or four years. And uh, what's quite similar about those two cases is that uh, Polish authorities uh, consciously reject any kind of dialogue with uh, Minsk, with uh, Belarusian yeah. authorities. Uh, the Polish president, uh, Andrzej Duda, made an, uh, forgive me those words, but he made an idiot out of himself <laughs> when he participated in the so-called Summit for Democracies organized by Biden administration. Uh, sitting together with uh, Svetlana Tikhanovska. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Self-proclaimed president of uh, the Republic of Belarus, uh, which was, uh, you know, mocked and uh, which was not treated very seriously all around the world because he even looked funny with, sitting there with her as a new Belarusian president, according to him. So that's the attitude of Polish, uh, uh, of Polish authorities towards... Uh, uh, the real um, uh, the real solutions of the whole crisis uh, which is another proof and uh, well my opinion my my thesis is that uh, actually the polish government doesn't want to solve the crisis i mean uh, as bruno told already it's a kind of a gift for them a political gift for them and and for their uh, and for their uh, let's say senior uh, leaders and commanders uh, in different uh, Anglo-Saxon uh, decision-making centers. So uh, I fear that uh, they will use uh, this crisis as a tool. They will not talk. I mean, uh, I, I made this example of Greece and Turkey, but uh, in the case of Greece and, Greece and Turkey, they were there were real historical reasons why the Athens and uh, Ankara were not coming into any kind of dialogue. The, the relations between those two countries are frozen since several decades, as we know, uh, practically. But there are no conflicts, just for, for our listeners to know, that there are no any kind of territory or political or other conflicts between Belarus and Poland. Yes, this is not the case which could be compared to the deep, uh, long-time conflict between uh, Greece and uh, Turkey. Uh, yeah. So we have no reasons not to talk with uh, Minsk and uh, Belarus. This is just a political decision, which uh, uh, is another example that the Polish government is not going to solve. The, it doesn't want to solve the problem as such. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, this is quite uh, interesting. On the other hand, the fierce uh, attack against Lukashenko. This is a little bit another topic, but nevertheless, I, uh, if you if you let uh, if you let me mention that, I also mentioned that in, in just in a few words the the whole context of the belarusian crisis of uh, another uh, let's say uh, aggressive uh, information attack and against minsk against uh, belarus has also some uh, let's say context which is rooted in the economic and social system of belarus we we, yeah. we we have not to forget about that, that uh, honestly speaking, Belarus is probably the only country of the Central uh, European Europe, including the former uh, Soviet countries, which which uh, has tried to build its own alternative economic system, uh, different from the neoliberal one, yes? Uh, uh, that, that, that's that's uh, how we could describe that. And uh, that uh, was also, a, let's say, a, uh, reason for furious reactions of uh, uh, all political for forces, all other countries uh, surrounding Belarus and uh, uh, criticizing Lukashenko, attacking him uh, at any uh, possible um, occasion. So uh, I really fear that they will 
continue to use uh, all those, uh, let's say, PR and manipulation techniques against Belarus in the coming months. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I uh, really fear that uh, they will, of course, try to, uh, by this uh, Polish war mongering, uh, that they will try to create a, a situation which might lead to a uh, certain kind, kind of a military conflict, even because they are going to refer to several provocations. As we have already seen, ask yourself a question why uh, the journalists cannot travel on the on the Polish side of the border. I mean, Lukashenko, the dictator, as they say, is letting all the journalists from all over the world to see the situation from the Belarusian side. Yes, the Polish uh, side, the Polish uh, area of three or four kilometers just near the Belarusian border is uh, under the state of exception, according to the Polish law, and uh, the journalists practically cannot enter this zone, which means that uh, it is the Polish side uh, who is uh, ready and, or who is thinking about preparing some provocations and uh, uh, not the Belarusian side, uh, which is more or less open for the journalists from all, from all over the world, yes? That's why uh, I fear that the tension will continue there. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Not, not, not agree that uh, there are no the, um, territory uh, conflict between Poland and Belarus. <laughs> I think that the, the all the ideology of the Polish politic it is make something that rebuild this uh, Poland in the in the borders which existed uh, in the 18th century. And this strategy of surrounding Russia of the puppet state, which will uh, which will um, collaborate with Poland, and also I think that Ukraine in, is the only country where the Polish petty bourgeoisie uh, could uh, invest and be like a ruling class, because in, <laughs> in, in every part of the world it is only the 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 bourgeoisie from germany french english or i don't know but there is the some uh, exception in ukraine where there are the polish bourgeois bourgeoisie which invest and profit the situation that 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 ukraine is the is the state in the anarchic state very very weak and they want to the same things make in in Belarus that uh, it is why they provoke the 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 colored revolution there it is why they they organize this propaganda Biosat media and all the time all the time they try to to uh, to make regime change in 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 Belarus to make privatization and in the new economic situation in the house in in the Belarus, the Polish uh, Polish elites thinks that they will uh, win something. I think that if the, there will be regime change, it will be the European bourgeoisie or yeah. Russian or or American who will win something. But in Polish mentality, the the, the the Belarus, the Ukraine, it is Polish zone of historical influence, and it it it, it will uh, be always the situation that Polish will be treated the the uh, citizens from the Belarus like something which uh, are uh, our ancient slaves. It's my uh, Michal, just uh, just to add something uh, to your point of view, uh, remember that uh, in 2003, several Polish uh, politicians who supported uh, the Polish participation in the aggression against Iraq were also talking about the possible gains and the kind of even a kind of colony of Poland in the Middle East. So it's, uh, I think, equally realistic. Of course, I tell you with irony, uh, equally unrealistic as as the ideas to 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 uh, control some part of the territory of Belarus, in my opinion. Yeah, I I think that uh, 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 the masters of Poland are in United States, but uh, sometimes Polish elites uh, think they are more independent than they are. Uh, but it's pure naive uh, 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 way of looking at things because, uh, you know, it looks quite a lot like back 
1939. He was thinking he was the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of a, a strong power, uh, which uh, disappeared in two weeks. Uh, 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 but he thought that, you know, Poland was not Czechoslovakia, was not Lithuania, it was a strong power. And of course, the French and English uh, powers at the time were laughing at that, but they were using it because, you know, as soon as Hitler was going east, it was good for them. Uh, but uh, of course, the uh, 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 1st of September 1939, he discovered he was just nothing. Um, and uh, the end of at the end of the day, he was in... Uh, he was arrested in Romania and uh, finished his life uh, in jail in Romania. Uh, but uh, I think that that's a situation which can be compared. I mean, the, 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 the nowadays Polish uh, leaders are um, more or less equally naive as were the pre-war Polish leader, with that difference that, of course, the world situation has changed. But anyway, I'm pretty convinced that if now Biden is rehabilitating um, uh, Kaczynski regime, um, it's a, a, a calculation. Uh, he knows uh, very well, uh, the American administration know that they are using them, but uh, as soon as they will not use, uh, need them anymore, they will uh, sacrifice them to others. Um, uh, and that's very important for Polish people people, that they must understand that they have much more interest to cooperate with Belarus and Ukrainian nation. I'm talking about nation. I'm not talking about political regime in Ukraine, uh, but they, they can cooperate with, with uh, Belarus as a state. Ukrainian state doesn't exist. So, I mean, uh, they can cooperate with the Ukrainian nation to liberate Ukrainian nation and Polish nation from American imperialism and from German he hegemonism, which needs, of course, a good cooperation of Poland also with other states like Russia, like China, um, and all the Eurasian uh, uh, countries, but this this is very difficult to 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 um, to promote because uh, Polish public opinion was polluted during the last thirty years with pseudo nationalistic uh, 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 ideas. Uh, tending to show that you know Poland now can be in the European Union can can occupy the sea Britain has occupied before Brexit, as if Polish economy was uh, at the level of British economy. Whatever we think about British uh, economy, but still there is the London city and it means something in the world financial system. The Warsaw uh, uh, stock exchange is just nothing. It's a provincial stock exchange without any influence. So. Poles must understand they are just a, 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 a Western colony uh, and that the West will never allow Poland to become a powerful independent country uh, 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 conquering Belarus and Ukraine because Euro Euro Belarus and, and Ukraine is for them, not for Polish bourgeoisie. <laughs> that's, that's the point I think we have to, to, to develop for Poles and other European, Eastern European countries, because we have more or less the same situation as Romanians, for example. Uh, Romanian as the vanguard of, of Latin Western civilization uh, in the Balkans and so on. All this illusion are, are just fake, fake, uh, um, uh, you know. Uh, I, I always uh, remember one thing. Uh, you had the, you know, the, the American black leader, Malcolm X, and it's very important to uh, to uh, look at his discourse when he was comparing so-called house Negroes with field Negroes. And, uh, 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 you know, the, the house Negroes were on the side of the masters because they thought they were not real slaves. Um, and they were uh, uh, exploiting uh, uh, again, uh, the, the field Negroes. Um, in, in fact, Poland, and uh, now Polish leadership is the house Negroes of the imperialism. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a Negroes, it's slave. They are slave, but just they are house, house slaved. Uh, so they have a little bit better clothes. But in fact, they are slave. So... <laughs>
So I think that it is good, good moment to to finish. Or Mateusz, do you want to add something? No, I, this point I, that I just that... want to to uh, to tell you that uh, I really admire that comparison. Yes, that was the perfect description by Bruno of uh, uh, the real uh, position of uh, Poland and its. Uh, Elites who think that they are elites, that they are ruling elites, but uh, uh, they are uh, not not nothing not nothing more than servants of uh, their masters uh, of the transatlantic ruling uh, classes. And uh, well, uh, we should uh, elaborate on that from the point of view of uh, of the classes. Yes, I, I think that uh, it's very good to use the tools we have. Uh, uh, in uh, the Marxist interpretations of uh, international relations uh, to somehow to try to describe the, 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 the role of uh, Poland and uh, similar countries. Bruno has mentioned Romania, for instance. I would also add the Baltic states. Yeah. Uh, their role uh, in the Anglo-Saxon uh, imperialist uh, plans and their role in the international system from uh, the Marxist point of view. So, Michal, that's a request, and uh, I think a, a new idea about uh, your program to, 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 to for your program to, to discuss uh, such issues and, and to try to conceptualize a kind of theory explaining what's uh, where Poland really is from the geoeconomical and geopolitical point of view. So. Thanks, Bruno, for this brilliant and great comparison because it was really uh, <laughs> shocking and great for me. I will try to spread it as as uh, much as possible because that was really perfect comparison of the situation of Poland. Thanks. Okay, thanks you all for this discussion.